Hey, what's up guys? It's Diana here with Entree Woman TV, helping transition your passion into the business that you love. Just not on this particular video. <laughs> on this video, I really just kind of want to do more of like a laid back video. I want to talk about some of the grumblings that I've kind of been hearing about the Panasonic GH5. Now, I have the G85, which is maybe like a little brother, a little sister to the GH5. I believe it came out after the GH4, but it's a really amazing camera and I'm actually shooting on it right now. The reason why I bring up, bring up the GH5 is because there's been this hack that recently came out. Now to give credit where credit is due, the guy's name is Yoda Yeo. Um, and as far as I can see, he was the first one to put up the video. I actually saw stuff about it from Peter Gregg um, that I actually like. Super nice, old, sweet, sweet guy. But um, I don't think he saw Yoda Yeo's video. But anyway, I think he was the originator and just from the guys like scientific analysis and all of that stuff I'm not going into in this video, it makes sense when you really think about it if you understand just a couple of the different concepts. I can't even fully explain it, but I will link up to Yoda Yeo's video so that you can check that out. That's like a tongue twister, Yoda Yeo, or a rap name. <laughs> so Yoda Yeo. Okay, so I'm just going to call him Yoda. So Yoda <laughs> Yoda did this video about the GH5. Now, if you are familiar with Panasonic cameras, then you know that they used a contrast-based focusing system, which is different than Sony and Canon that uses a phase detection autofocus system. Can't really explain all of the differences between them, but a contrast-based system, or at least what Can uh, Canon has, well, not Canon, but Panasonic has, for their systems is good for photography. It does not work the best for when you're doing videos. Now, Panasonic has a depth from defocus system that makes it even just blazing fast when you are doing pictures. You just click, 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 and you are gaining focus on all kinds of stuff. But when you switch over to video, the autofocusing system uh, is different. They say that contrast-based what an autofocus <laughs> is more uh, accurate, but that phase detection is just faster, you know? So I don't know, do you want accuracy or do you want faster? Either way, there's a hack out there about it being able to be faster, the Panasonic cameras or the GH5 thus far, simply by not using the 180 degree shutter rule, but maybe 179 degree, 120 degree, or even 150 degree. Now, of course, Spectrum 360, again, I'm not trying to get too technical, and I just want to get into some tests that I ran with the G85 and see if it kind of makes a difference and then kind of do one here with me in the actual frame. But the difference with the 180 degree shutter rule is that basically if you're shooting 30 frames per second, then you want to make sure that you're having a shutter speed of at least 60. If you're doing 24 frames per second, ideally you would want to shoot 48 for the shutter speed or just the shutter speed to that number but the closest that we can get in the NTSC system which is over in America this is getting real techy but <laughs> the best that you can get is 50 so that's kind of where it is just double whatever that number is now Yoda decided to test it out he noticed with a real loud lens that he adapted to his camera was just like it would go from tick 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 to when he was adjusting these different shutter angles and that's what it was it was going from like a shutter speed to adjusting to a shutter angle skip more technicals than i want it to be but it's kind of so you can understand the math behind shutter angle versus you know the shutter speed examples that i just gave so the way that shutter angle is calculated is that when you think about degrees the most that you can get is like 360 degrees so you take 360 degrees divide that by the shutter angle, whether that's 150 or 180, and you multiply that times the frame rate, which would be 30 frames per second or maybe 60 frames per second, and that'll give you the shutter speed that you should use. So when you're doing 120 degree shutter, shutter speed and you multiply that by 30 frames per second uh, against the 360, then that'll give you a 90 degree uh, or 90 uh, shutter speed that it should be set to if you were doing let's say 150 degrees at still at 30 frames per second that number would be 72 so I just wanted to do a couple quick tests and just see what happens
So real quick, I want to do another test, just kind of more or less live as I'm doing a recording for this video that I probably won't see until I get it in post-production. And then I can put, you know, text down of what, which one was going and which one wasn't. And just adjust from 150 degree shutter angle versus 120 degree shutter angle. So let's see what happens. Okay, so this will have to be more of a vlogging style. Sorry if you hear like any chords rattling or anything like that. I still have the lapel microphone on. So I have it set to 100 for the shutter speed <laughs> uh, and then I also have it to 30 frames per second. So that should be close to about the 120 degree shutter angle rule. So uh, it is on the face tracking feature. So let's see if it you know holds on my face and then if I switch to something else, just how long it takes to actually switch back and forth. So back to me and just go back over here. Does it actually focus on any books or anything or any of the other crap I have down here? And then back to me. Maybe the books is probably better. It has text on it. And then back to the books. And then back to me. So that is about 120 degree shutter angle. Okay, still have the face tracking on. So now I have it set to 80 for the shutter speed, which should resonate with the 100, 150 degree shutter angle. So let's just kind of see what happens. So I have it on the face tracking. So it's on me now Let's see how well it does just focusing on the books. Back to me. Then back to me. Okay, so that was just a test of me, you know, swiping back and forth from something else in the room to, you know, maybe on the bookshelf to back on me. So again, I won't be able to see the actual result of this test until I actually go back and review it in the editing software. So. I'm curious, what do you guys think? Do you think it's really something to us? For the GH5, I really did see some results. I actually even saw a video today. Somebody tried it on the LX100 and the GX85, uh, which is a different format camera, more uh, about the size of maybe the Canon M6, something like that, smaller camera. But it seemed to work, so I don't know if it's just a Panasonic thing or what. But the GH5 actually does have a, a shutter angle mode. We don't have that on the G85, or not that I'm aware of. Uh, so if you know differently, let me know. But I think it may be something to it slightly. But I mean, from the test that Yoda did, it looked fantastic and he actually did get better results. But again, I'll just have to check and see what happens and maybe put that to the test and do some more testing with it. If I find out some more, I'll probably do a follow up video to that. And if it is one, I'll link it up in the YouTube card above. But of course, question of the day. Have you tried this out on your Panasonic camera? Do you think it's even something to it or did you notice a difference when I was trying out these different shutter angles? So let's see what you guys think down in the comments below. Thanks for checking out this quick test video. I don't actually do videos like this where I test stuff out. If you liked it, I can do more of these. Just let me know. Give it a big thumbs up down below. But as always, my friends, live with passion.